Right now in 10 results and reaction from today's spring primary election and new details about a homicide this week in Beloit and the attempts made by the victim to protect herself from the alleged suspect. And later, new details tonight about former Wisconsin Governor Tony Earle after he suffered a stroke this week. It's all ahead on News 3 Now at 10. And thanks for joining us tonight. It is primary election day in Wisconsin. The only statewide race is the race for Wisconsin Supreme Court. Within the past hour, Janet Protosiewicz has been selected to move on to the general election. And when that, within just the past few minutes, we have learned that Judge Dan Kelly will be her challenger in April. He won tonight over Judge Jennifer Darrow by a close margin, roughly 23,000 separating the two with 87% of precincts reporting. But again, this has been called by the Associated Press. We will update results and live team coverage in just a few minutes. But before that, our stretch of first worn weather alert days is now underway, accumulating snowfall and freezing rain, both possibilities over the course of the next three days, all depending on where you live. The snow already coming down in Madison, as you see now, this is a DOT cam shot along the interstate at Linden Station. Now that area expected to see several inches of snow overnight. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us with our first warn forecast. Gary. Eric, the first part of the storm is pretty much going as planned. More snow up to the north of Madison, not much from Madison southward. Let's start out by taking a look at our first warm weather alert days in the forecast from tonight all the way through Thursday. We'll be looking for snow north of Madison tonight with some accumulation, and then we'll see a mix of snow, freezing rain, and sleet, changing to mainly freezing rain and sleet for, uh, south of Dane County, a mix here in Madison, and mainly snow up to the north where some of that snow could be heavy. Ice storm warnings are in effect south of Dane County. Winter storm warnings from Dane County northward from tomorrow morning into uh, Thursday evening. Uh, high resolution radar shows more of the snow now lifting to the north of Dane County. That's where the accumulating snow will be over the next few hours. Uh, six hour future track radar shows that snow continuing to stay mainly north of Madison. So again, there could be some accumulations there. Visibility is right now down to a half mile in Watoma, but notice the rest of southern Wisconsin, very little reduction in the way of visibilities, meaning the snow is not falling very hard, if at all. Current temperatures, it's nearly steady in the middle 20s. Madison at 26, Janesville right now 32, across Dane County. Temperatures range from 28 in Perry to 29 in Belleville and 27 degrees in McFarland. Look for mostly cloudy skies, most of the snow north of Madison overnight, and it'll be breezy. Temperatures holding nearly steady in the upper 20s. Could be as much as four or five inches north of Wisconsin Dells, but later on I'll take a look at the timing on the snow and freezing rain tomorrow and how much will eventually accumulate by the time it's all done on Thursday. Gary, thank you. More than 100 local school districts have already canceled classes. For tomorrow, that includes Madison, the Middleton Cross Plains District, along with Verona, Janesville, Sauk Prairie, and Sun Prairie, and many more. The, the complete list is at channel3000.com. With this winter weather, employees with the Streets Division, energy companies around Dane County have been hard at work making sure that everything is in order. Our McKenna Alexander live on the patio tonight with details on those preparations ahead of the storm. McKenna? Yeah, employees of Madison Streets Division tell me, unfortunately, they were not able to treat the roads with brine due to truck malfunction. However, much of the roads around the Madison area are being treated with salt. Those trucks heading out just a few hours ago. You can see on this live camera that right now roads are pretty clear, but that can change overnight and into tomorrow. Now, when it comes to these southern parts of Dane County, ice is a major concern and is something that local energy companies are keeping an eye on. We are continuously preparing for any event that could impact energy service. And so obviously with the winds, the snow, the cold that's forecasted over the next 24, 48 hours, we're making sure our equipment's in top working order so that we're ready and able to respond if need be. Now, just a reminder, check that your furnace and water heater are clear. And as always, never bring a portable generator inside should your power happen to go out this week. All right, McKenna, thank you. With these three days of winter storms, it's a perfect time to download our free Channel 3000 weather app. Get all your local weather information for free on the go. Campaign 2023 coverage now today was all about setting the stage for the general election in April. The biggest race, the only statewide race for Wisconsin Supreme Court. Here's a look at the results so far. This is actually not the state Supreme Court race, but that was a four-way race, of course. The conservative candidates, Jennifer Doro and Judge Dan Kelly, and on the liberal side, Janet Protosiewicz and Judge Everett Mitchell. There are your numbers. Again, with 89% of precincts reporting Protosiewicz, that race called early that she would advance. She now has 421,000 votes, 46% of the overall vote. 
The close part of this race was between Kelly and Doro. That was called, as we mentioned moments ago. He has a 22,000 vote lead again with 89% of precincts reporting. We have team coverage on this race tonight. Armand Rahman at the Protosewitz camp in Milwaukee. But first, let's start with political reporter Will Keneally live in Waukesha County. Will? So, Eric, um, sorry, I'll sneak a little bit closer here as we are uh, during the national anthem here. Uh, we're here at the Kelly Walsh party, uh, waiting for the uh, former Supreme Court Justice to speak, to take the stage, uh, to talk about his victory here. Um, he surged ahead, essentially, throughout the night, um, racking up sizable winds uh, around the state, outside of the conservative bastion of southeastern Wisconsin, where we are here. We're looking at uh, possibly uh, a late surgeons from uh, Jennifer Doro in southeastern Wisconsin, uh, but she just didn't get enough votes to overcome that uh, tally that the former Supreme Court Justice had racked up there. So we're looking at uh, a conservative uh, former Supreme Court Justice Dan Kelly facing uh, liberal candidate Janet Protasewicz out of Milwaukee County. And we should expect to hear from that former Supreme Court Justice in just a few minutes here. Reporting from Waukesha County, Will Keneally, News 3 now. Well, yeah, well, the crowd was just as loud here when Janet Brosevich was giving her speech on that stage. It has cleared out just a little bit, but they are still celebrating after the AP called the race for the Milwaukee County judge with just about half of the precincts reporting. And after coming out on top over Dane County Judge Everett Mitchell, Brosevich says a lot rides on the general election. She stressed her push to support a woman's right to choose an abortion, reproductive rights, and said there is still a long 42-day road ahead. I'm counting on all of you, each and every one of you, to continue the momentum all the way through April 4th because there's too much at stake, way too much at stake for us to stop for even a moment, right? And there was a lot of notable faces in the crowd here, including Mandela Barnes, a former lieutenant governor who also had his general election party here in November, as well as 6th District State Senator Latanya Johnson. For now, reporting live in Milwaukee, Armand Rahman, News 3 Now. All right, Armand, Will, thanks to both of you. Now in Madison, arguably the biggest race in the ballot here was the mayoral primary, the field of three whittled to two tonight, and that will include incumbent Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway and Gloria Reyes who together combined to get 88% of the vote. Scott Kerr with 12%. This is now with 99% of precincts reporting. You see the incumbent with 60% of the vote. According to the city of Madison clerk's office, as of about 530 tonight, voter turnout was at about 23% in the city, but the clerk's office says it was prepared for 40% turnout and did have to print some additional ballots throughout the day at multiple polling locations. In addition to the mayoral race, there are also eight city council seats being contested. You can see the results of those as well as many local races outside the city of Madison. They're at channel3000.com. We'll also have them scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Election day got off to a disruptive start in the village of Brooklyn. Their polling location had a change due to a public safety threat that ended with a 75 year old man being arrested though the threat was not directed at the polling location officials still thought the right decision was to move the clerk treasurer says police were responding to an incident outside the polling place that was making it difficult for people to get in and vote felt with the presence of the police and the difficulty getting to the polling place because then there was only one entrance to get to the polling place i felt it was better to move Deputies were sent to the area this morning for reports of shots fired over what we later learned was a dispute between neighbors about a tree. With this disruption, the polling place has moved down the street to Windy Lane. Voters were able to continue on with their day as planned. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll break down the results today. We'll speak with a political expert from the UW on what these results mean for the landscape of the general election, which is coming up in April. An update this evening to a story we first told you about last night at 10. Former Wisconsin Governor Tony Earle suffered a stroke this week and is now receiving palliative care. That's according to his oldest daughter, Julia Earle. The 86-year-old served one term as governor from 1983 to 87. Earl, one of six living former Wisconsin governors. Another update tonight. Officials have identified the man who died after being hit by a train in Watertown late last week. 23-year-old Andrew Tucker, who was from Watertown, died in that crash. It happened about 6.30 Friday night near the area of West Main at Hiawatha. 
Details about what led to the crash have not been released, but police say there is no indication of any criminal activity. Developing today out of Beloit, police have arrested Tyrone Young in what is now a suspected domestic violence homicide yesterday morning. The family has identified the victim to us as 29-year-old Stefania B. Bussar. On January 18th of this year, a month before she was murdered, she filed a restraining order against Young in Dane County Court. In the restraining order, she said Young was harassing her, needed help for mental health, threatened to take his own life if she didn't help, and tried to break into her home. The restraining order was dismissed. The presiding judge told us it was because neither party appeared in court. We talked to her sister today. He only could give me so much information, and he said he basically indicated that there was an incident with B and um, that she she died. I from I literally just like felt my heart just fall out of my body. Like like I just felt like there was a big hole missing in my body. The victims. And I, I just totally lost it. The victim's family tells us they were expecting the victim and her five children to come over for family taco night, but she never showed up, leading to the call to police. Still ahead tonight, we'll break down today's primary election and what it means for the upcoming general election in April. And we'll hear from Gary again, the latest on this upcoming winter storm. That's straight ahead. Stay with us. At Stanton Optical, independent eye doctors are available for eye exams whenever you need one. You should have seen me before I got mine. You're so quiet. Are you mad at me? Book your free same-day eye exam at Stanton Optical today. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Why should you have to continue to do that? Through no fault of your own, you may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. And once again, you're called upon by your family to serve and protect. We want you to know we are here to support you. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin, with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. It's not easy to ask for a hand up, but we are clear in our mission. No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. 833 W-I-S-V-R-A-P. That's 833-947-8727. Right now, get an extra 25% off Slumberland's low prices during the final week of our huge president sale. Come see our special offers throughout the store. Plus, special financing is available for convenient monthly payments. And just for the final week, get an extra 25% off. Check out this gorgeous sectional, and it comes with a free ottoman. Plus, so much more during the final week of our huge president sale at Slumberland Furniture. With an extra 25% off. Back by popular demand, Black Violin returns to Overture Center for one night only. Be prepared, this isn't your typical classical violin concert. Black Violin, Thursday, March 2nd at Overture. Get your tickets today at Overture.org. Don't delay, the Brothers Main President's Day sale is happening now. Shop local and save with tremendous deals on Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Maytag, and Amana appliances. We have the area's largest selection and the lowest prices guaranteed. Feel like family. Brothers Main. Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. We do the math, people. For $79, you get all this. That costs over $400 at Lens Crafters, over $200 at Walmart, and over $150 at America's Best. When it comes to value, Stanton Optical is the top bird. Tomorrow, a crazy winter storm sets us up for an alert day. I'm tracking the snow, sleet, and freezing rain and how that could impact your travel plans. And we'll break down the 2023 spring primary results. Join us tomorrow from 4.30 to 7. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Thank you all very much for your support, for your votes, for being here with me this evening. May our great God bless each and every one of you and our great state of Wisconsin. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the tail end of Dan Kelly addressing his supporters there in uh, Waukesha.
Quick recap of the two bigger races we're keeping an eye on. The first, let's quickly check in on the Madison mayoral race. Uh, let's actually just go to the Supreme Court numbers here. Janet Protasewicz, as we mentioned, 46% of the vote. Kelly edging out Jennifer Doro with 24 to 22%. And then Everett Mitchell uh, couldn't get much traction in there. Not a lot. He unfortunately couldn't raise much and didn't see much advertising from him during this campaign. Joining us now is Michael Wagner. As we take a quick look at the mayoral races, it'll be Sacha Rhodes Conway against Gloria Reyes in April for the Madison uh, mayor's race. Uh, let's go to Mike Wagner, UW Madison professor, to weigh in on this. Uh, first of all, when you just look at the numbers, Pretty solid turnout for kind of a snowy, chilly uh, day with a storm on the way in, Mad in Wisconsin and parts of the state anyway. It, it may be 250,000 more voters in this primary than the last state Supreme Court primary, so so pretty good turnout for sure. All right, so we're, when we look at the, these numbers, we've got Protosewitz against Kelly. What's your first thought when you see that matchup? My first thought is that the last time Kelly was on the ballot, he won the primary by about 90,000 votes and then lost the, the general election by 150,000 votes. Here the primary is clearly tilted to the liberal candidate Protosewicz's favor, and so Kelly has a lot of ground to make up over the next two months. What do you think was the difference in the, in, between Kelly and Doro in that, in that race? Well, Kelly was a known commodity. Mm -hmm. He'd been on the state Supreme Court. Uh, he also had quite a lot of outside money, and so that, that helped in terms of his advertising, so name recognition plus the spending, and his judicial philosophy probably also sat uh, better with uh, some uh, more conservative voters in the state. So it's three years it'll be since Jill Karofsky beat him. Uh, what does he have to do maybe differently this time around to, to edge out Janet Protosewitz? He's got to make up quite a bit of votes uh, in the suburbs, not, not just around Milwaukee, but around every kind of large and mid-sized city in the state. The Republican Party has been losing some voters there. And while this is a nonpartisan race, mm -hmm. Kelly's the conservative candidate, Protosewitz is the liberal candidate, and he's got some ground to make up, especially in the suburbs, and he's going to need excellent turnout in rural Wisconsin. When we talk about turnout, and I just looked at the numbers, the two liberal candidates had about 60,000 more more voters tonight and, and yet I think the Doro uh, um, Kelly race was one that probably most people thought was going to be a, a tighter battle does that can we get anything from that that there were quite a few more folks out there voting tonight for the liberals I think what we can take from it is that the Republican Party has some quick unifying to do mm -hmm. whereas the liberal candidates uh, were really I think ha had more excitement amongst the voters. They see a real chance to change abortion law in Wisconsin. They see a chance to get redistricting reform. They see a chance to get voting rights or, or vo voting rights decisions before the state Supreme Court. And mm -hmm. they have their first chance in a couple of decades to really have a seismic shift on that court. They're, they're a little more enthused right now. You just touched on why this race is so important with some of those issues. What can we expect for these next month or so plus? We thought we saw a lot of ads. I assume we're going to see a ton more coming. It's a statewide election in Wisconsin. We'll see a lot of ads. We'll see a lot of negative uh, advertising. We'll see a lot of outside spending. And we'll see these two candidates explain who they are and why they deserve a 10-year seat on our state's highest court. We will definitely get to know them very well in the next month or so. Mike, you were with us all day today. Really appreciate you spending time giving us some great insight. Thank you. And a reminder, the spring general election is April 4th. For all of the results from today's races, big and small, we have the results on our website, channel3000.com, and of course, extensive coverage, interviews from the races as well. Now to the other big story of the night, the weather and what's ahead through Thursday. Chief Meteorologist Gary Cadalta, your first warm forecast. Yeah, the first First part of the storm has reached us, but it's going to go on for a couple of days. Three things you need to know in the forecast. The snow will be mainly north of Madison. That's where almost all the precipitation will be in the form of snow and very little in the way of freezing rain. That could lead to heavy snow, especially Wednesday and Wednesday night across uh, the areas north of Dane County. Now, Dane County and areas to the south will probably see some freezing rain, maybe a mix in Dane County, but the farther south you go, the more likely it is to just to be sleet and freezing rain. And it also will be windy, especially uh, during the day tomorrow and into at least tomorrow evening with winds of 20 to 35 miles per hour and some stronger gusts. And areas that get some ice accumulation, especially on power lines, that could lead to some problems with uh, power outages. We've had a band of snow kind of lift northward uh, through the Madison area. Now just some flurries south of Madison. To the, for the most part, the heavier band of snow right now runs from uh, just north of Beaver Dam to just north of the Dells and then over toward Toma. Uh, this is snow vision, uh, snowfall estimates, and generally about one to three inches of snow uh, already uh, from this storm out toward the La Crosse area, maybe some areas a little more than three inches. Uh, west of La Crosse, 
generally an inch or less north of Madison, south of Madison, little or no uh, accumulation. And additional snowfall tonight, probably in the neighborhood of two to three inches up in Juneau and Adams counties. That would get them close to four or five inches. But north of Dane County, uh, maybe less than an inch uh, in Columbia and Sauk County, and uh, even less farther to the south. However, again, mainly snow north of Dane County during the day tomorrow. A mix here in Dane County and areas to the east and west. And that could go either way. We could see a mix. We could see more snow and less freezing rain or more freezing rain and less snow. And that would make a big difference in whether or not there's big ice accumulations or heavier snow accumulations. But the tier of counties to our south, generally that's going to be freezing rain and sleet with the possibility for some significant ice accumulations. So let's take it future track beginning tonight. Again, the best chances for snow north of the Dells then it kind of winds down early tomorrow morning, maybe a, a, a couple of hour break, and then the next batch of precipitation starts to arrive by 8 a.m. Probably starting out as snow, but then quickly changing over to some sleet and freezing rain south of Dane County, and maybe a mix in and around Madison and Dane County with temperatures just below freezing. Again, those strong north, east to northeasterly winds continuing. The mix to the south of Madison into tomorrow evening, mainly snow and some of that snow heavy north of Madison. By midnight tomorrow night, it starts to wind down a little bit. We'll probably see a little more spotty snow shower activity, maybe a little bit of light freezing rain or freezing drizzle. This is 6 a.m. Thursday morning, but the last batch kind of lifts to the north as we head toward mid-morning on Thursday and by 2 o'clock it's pretty much gone across most of southern Wisconsin. Ice accumulations down to the south, again, maybe as much as a half inch or more of freezing rain. That's significant ice accumulations. And total snowfall for everything could be looking at over a foot of snow north and west of Camp Douglas and Linden Station up to Watoma maybe about uh, eight or nine inches over toward the Dells. S Madison could be anywhere from two inches if we get more freezing rain, maybe as much as five or six inches if we get more snow. And then down toward the Illinois state line, very little in the way of snow accumulations. Ice storm warnings south of Dane County, winter storm warnings Dane County northward from tomorrow into Thursday. For tonight, look for mainly snow north of Madison, low temperature about where we are now at 28 degrees. And again, by morning, about one to five inches north of the Dells. Tomorrow, a high of 32, very windy, Snow north of Dane County, a mix in Dane County, and then to the south, freezing rain and sleet. Your first warm 7 to 10 day forecast. After the storm moves out, look for a high of only 18 on Friday. We'll warm up for the weekend, see a mix of rain and snow, and maybe some freezing rain Sunday night into Monday, and then a mix of rain and snow on Wednesday. Notice at least temperatures a little bit warmer, mainly in the mid 30s to around 40. And coming up in sports, it was sectional semifinal Tuesday on the ice. How Edgewood used a big second period to move one step closer to head back to the state tournament. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. All you have to do is point. Yes! 1-800-GOT-JUNK can make it disappear. And that's why they all start dancing. Woo. Break up with your junk. Save $41 with the code BREAKUP41. Get 11% off everything at Menards. Upgrade any space and maximize storage with great closet systems from Dakota Closets. Make your storage your own with our selection of custom sizes and styles to match your specific needs. Dakota Closets are easy to set up and are great for hanging clothes and storing accessories in any room of your house. Get 11% off all Dakota Closets right now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. I became an orthopedic surgeon for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. To help you take walks again. To ease your pain. To rebuild your strength. And at every step along the way. We take the time to answer all your questions. We're here because we care. We care about you. 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 They care about me. Sauk Prairie Healthcare Orthopedics, now offering robotic assisted knee replacement. Chevy Silverado factory lifted trucks. With the capability of a two inch lift, the versatility of the available multi-flex tailgate, and the connection of a 13.4 inch diagonal touchscreen. Chevy Silverado, taking adventure to a whole new level. Get 2.99% financing for five years on all 2022 Silverado 1500 pickups or get 12.50 cash allowance on this Silverado with a 2.7 liter engine. Plus current Chevy owners get an additional 32.50 total cash allowance. 
Lake Ridge may be a new name, but it isn't a new bank. It's one built on over a century of community commitment. One equipped with all the knowledge and resources of 145 collective years of experience. Monona Bank and State Bank of Cross Plains are coming together as one. As Lake Ridge Bank, we're doing more together for you. Need life insurance? Select Quote found Jacob, 40, a $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. And Select Quote found his wife, Wendy, a $500,000 policy for only $17 a month. Select Quote. We shop, you save. At Overture, February 21st through 26th, tickets at Overture.org. All you have to do is point. Yes! 1-800-GOT-JUNK can make it disappear. And that's why they all start dancing. Woo. Break up with your junk. Save $41 with the code BREAKUP41. Everything up to this point for the Badger women's hockey team, their fast start, the five-game skid we don't like to talk about, and how they've skated in the last two series, it all means nothing because it's playoff time, the WCHA. Up first for Wisconsin, a best of three series with Minnesota State, a team who UW owned this season. They outscored them 18 to four in just four games. But Mark Johnson knows in the postseason, anything can happen, which is why it truly is the best time of the year. Everybody has zero losses and zero wins, and now who can win two games? And if you're able to do that, then you get to go the following week up to Minneapolis, and. You know, you can play two games up there. If you're successful, you win a trophy. So and then you get a free ticket to the NCAA tournament. So there's a lot to play for. Uh, it happens quickly, and that's the fun part about it. So to answer your question, it's a great time of year. Playoff hockey. This weekend is the final week of the regular season for the Badger men's hockey team. And when they head into the Big Ten tournament, they'll be skating with confidence because they've beaten every team in the conference except Penn State who they'll face Friday and Saturday. So just like the last couple weeks, Tony Granado's squad is treating the regular season finale like the playoffs. And they're heading into Happy Valley buzzing. We go in the playoffs. Uh, we know the team that we will play, that we have had success against them. And it's, it's you know, time to you know, buckle down and recognize the fact that every little detail, whether it be the first shift of the game or first shift of the period or the last shift, it doesn't matter. They're all important, and that's the focus that we'll have to have. High school boys hockey, Edgewood hosting Middleton in a sectional semifinal. Cardinals were on the attack in the first. Ethan Lamb wraps it around to Brady Anglekiss, who paints the post to give Middleton a 1-0 lead. Second period, though, Edgewood came out buzzing. Will Hartman tied it, and then this is just filthy from Dylan Lenz. He deeks and then slides it to Easton Kinsler, who lights the lamp. Crusaders get the 3-1 to win, and will face Verona with the winner heading to state. On the girls' side, Madison Metro hosting Badger in a sectional semifinal. Links up 1-0 and looking for more in the second period. Emma Stebbins skates right through the lightning and goes corner pocket to make it a two-goal game. Madison Metro would go on to win 4 nothing. They'll face Viroqua in the sectional finals. We're back after this. Us. This isn't us. Is it? Uh-huh. Let's take a break from our devices for five days, five hours, or even just five minutes. And let's see what we find. Hey, bud. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy an RV at Wisconsin RV World, and that's pretty darn close. Find your happiness during their RV Super Sale this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday only. Save over $30,000 on this new Heartland fifth wheel. Get this Keystone Springdale for as low as $185 a month, or this Cruiser Radiance for only $240 a month. Plus, get a one-year no-charge camping pass with every RV purchase. Wisconsin RV World! If it doesn't say Wisconsin, it's just another RV dealer. It's Auto Show. The deals start now, and so should you. Get started on your next Ford truck. Like a next generation pickup. Get here for a deal on F-Series. America's best-selling trucks, 46 years straight. It's Auto Show. The deals start now, and so should you. 
During Auto Show, choose Flex Buy on F-150 with 2.9% APR financing for 66 months, plus 1,000 credit cash and 1,000 Auto Show cash. Oh, the weather. What's the chance of rain tomorrow? Ooh, 80%. I make it rain, I make it rain. Speaking of making it rain, at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, we have an average 95% payout, which leads you to more chances of playing longer and more chances to win big. Play longer, win more, chances are you're gonna like it. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. Lean back and save big this winter at the Century House. Right now, save hundreds going from one grade of stressless leather to a superior grade for free. Or save $300 and get a free battery when you purchase any stressless mic or stressless max motorized recliner or any stressless classic power recliner. Don't miss out. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. I just got the new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra from US Cellular. With nitography, it can take selfies in low light. Click. Amazing. Can it go back in the back? Yeah, it can go back in the back. Okay. The new Samsung Galaxy S23, free for everyone from US Cellular. Charlotte Deleste's personal battle with concussion, Thursday at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. So, Gary, you been doing anything today? Or what? <laughs> same old, same old. <laughs> Watching it snow, yeah. The, this is the easy part of the storm. The snow lifting to the north, pretty much as expected. So there'll be a couple of inches of accumulation by morning, especially north of the Dells, maybe three or four inches there. South of Madison, um, it's pretty much over with, unless there's just a couple of flurries out there, but you can see that on six-hour future track radar. Temperatures right now below freezing, which is what you need for snow and freezing rain. 32 in Janesville, but here in Dane County, temperatures mainly in the mid-20s. These will probably come up a bit over the next few hours. 28 right now in uh, Stoughton, 27 degrees in McFarland, 28 degrees in Cross Plains. But farther out to the west, uh, temperatures do drop off a little bit closer to La Crosse. Ice storm warnings south of Dane County, winter storm warnings from Dane County northward from tomorrow into uh, Thursday. Kelly Slifko will have the latest updates tomorrow. And also at channel3000.com, school closings and election results. Have a good night.